For a while, Bo's mane fell silent. Then Buddha opened his mouth and said, In this life, we must kill three things. First, we must kill our parents. Jesus said, That I have already done. I told my disciples, Those who do not hate their parents are not worthy of me. Good. Second, we must kill the Buddha. That means, in your case, your disciples must also kill you as their teacher. I told them each should carry his own cross, because my cross is my cross. Young man, we have met on this road. Now kill me. Jesus looked up surprised. How can I kill you? You are my friend. Kill me within you. Don't cling to me. And when you have killed me, you will be grateful to me. You know that saying, when you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. Yes. Well, what is the message of that saying? For it is the disciple who loves the Buddha, the Buddha becomes his last peri, because he feels grateful towards the Buddha. To become totally free, even the beloved master has to be left behind. When you go deeper and deeper, all thoughts disappear. Then only the thought of your master remains. And it is very difficult to say goodbye to your master, who has shown you the way out of your inner bondage. You owe so much to the master, and now to say goodbye to the person who has been your guide, your friend, it seems impossible. And the disciple, at the last moment, starts clinging to the master. Your last career is your father in heaven. You cling to the idea of your father. You only want to love him. You can give up all but not your idea of your father. You fear that you will fall into an abyss of nothingness. Nothing to hold on, nothing to pray to. Kill your father in your mind. So you will be totally alone. Not even the shadow of God within you. Your father has become your last career. I came to give you a push to give him up, to get rid of your father. It is not enough to sell what you have or to give up your family. You must also forsake what you believe is your father in heaven. Kill your idea of God. Then for the first time you will see clearly and not depend on anything. That is the final freedom. I told my disciples, even this desperate grasping for enlightenment is futile. So, the disciple has finally to let go of his willful efforts. The Buddha is not a person to be clung to. It is for this reason it appears that I had to pass away. That is the same what I am saying to my followers. I have to leave them. I said to men, I shall pass away. Because if they see me for a long time, they will not start practicing. If they think that I am always here, they will become too lazy. Therefore I said to them, I shall pass away. Also, I did not. 
The disciples have to be knocked out of their attachment until nothing is left to hold on. You are not free from your entanglement with your father because you have been caught up in the useless ways of the old prophets and holy scriptures. You do not believe in yourself enough. Friend, I tell you this. There is no God, no spiritual path to follow, no practice and no realization. What are you so feverish running after? Heaven? <laughs> there is no heaven. Buddha then let our thundering great shout of Ha! To empty Jesus' mind and free him from his dualistic view of heaven and earth, good and bad, sin and purity. Jesus was shocked. He nearly fell back on his back. Buddha said, as soon as you begin to believe in something, you can no longer see anything else. The truth you believe in and cling to hinders you to see anything new. Holding on to beliefs limits our experience of life. But when the belief system is threatened, people may even become so fanatical that they kill the man who threatens it, that you will have to suffer yourself. You want something to hold on to. Your father in heaven. You want to say, finally I have found it. This is it, and now I feel confirmed and secure and righteous. Buddhism is not free of it either. <laughs> right. Therefore there is a saying, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. How do I do that? When you see that you are clinging to this idea of a father in heaven, Kill the father. Look, look into this idea until you see that it is just in your mind. In that way, the idea of a father in heaven will let go of itself. Jesus turned his face away. He knew he could give up everything, even his life, but never the idea of a father in heaven. After a long silence, Jesus said with a low voice, Buddha, you have to admit that we are spiritual brothers which march in common. Buddha shook his head slowly. No, there are too many differences between my teaching and your teaching. Of course, you and I, we were living in different times and different cultures. But these differences really make the many similarities all the more striking. No, we disagree on so many points. On reincarnation, life and suffering the cause of suffering and achieving ultimate goals. So our teachings are incompatible. You have too much emotional attachment. You are often intolerant, claiming that you are the only true way. Many people claim all belief systems are the same when they are not but we should treat one another with mutual respect. Jesus said, uh, If I could find some time to travel to India, I would encourage your followers to follow me on a single way, one with no fork in the past. But it should be a road that leads within and out of samsara. No, to my heavenly father, 
In my father's house there are many mansions. I shall prepare a place also for your disciples. Buddha said, no need. Now after talking quite a long, let us keep a noble silence for a while. The bows were sitting motionless in the shade of the tree. Jesus was not accustomed to sit still for a long time doing nothing. He always wanted to speak to his dead in heaven. But Buddha said softly, Don't pray. Forget heaven. Look within until you reach the ground of your being. Finally, Buddha opened his mouth and said to Jesus, My friend, now go back to your people, but please don't suffer for me. Life is suffering enough. Don't make it more painful. I will leave you now. If some Jews see me, they might kill me. That is for sure, not narrow-minded as they are. Instead of killing the Buddha according to the commandment, Jesus embraced the spirit body of Buddha. Buddha smiled. Then he floated away until he disappeared in the horizon like a cloud. Jesus could not stand on his feet, so he had to sit under the tree, now alone. He felt as if scales fell from his eyes, and for the first time he could see things as they really are, and not distorted through his Jewish eyes. Then he thought, now I see his teaching and my teaching are incompatible. He rejects my father, the creator of the world. His teaching seriously threatens my doctrines. That makes a dialogue between us quite difficult. Jesus got up from the earth and opened his eyes, but he could see nothing. Everything in him and around him seemed to be shaken. His seemingly, his seemingly firm belief in his Father in heaven was broken. To mend it, he tried to question the account of his Buddha. Was this encounter real? Or was it just a sunstroke? Or was it a demonic influence? Impossible! Such a thing cannot happen to me, the Son of God! But I had helped for the will of God was only my own will. Impossible. Disoriented Jesus walked around the tree. It seemed that he had lost the way that he was himself. Finally he could perceive the way again slightly blurred and he went back to Jerusalem. While Jesus was walking back on the road to Jerusalem he spoke to himself. I will not tell my disciples anything about my meeting with the Buddha. They might enthusiastically welcome certain ideas of that man, to tell them that they could attain liberation by their own efforts without me would be dangerous. I must proclaim that I, the Christ, am the only way, the truth and the life. Salvation can be attained only through faith in me. What it was walking he thought, Something in our life stories must be different. Buddha died in old age, so I will die young. He died peacefully under two trees in blossom. I will die on a stake, but without blossoms. He died laying down. I will die hanging upright on a cross, so that people cannot say later, Jesus' life is just a copy of Buddha's life. 
when the disciples saw Jesus coming, stumbling, they were all afraid of him. He looked so changed. They supported him and led him by the hand into a house. There he sat three days alone in the room, as blind. He said nothing, ate nothing, drank nothing. No one dared to disturb him because it was believed that he was praying. After the three days were over, his beloved John came to him in the room and laid his beautiful hands on Jesus' uncombed head and said, Lord, you shall see again. At that moment it fell like scales from Jesus' eyes that he could see again. First he stared for a while into the void. Finally he opened his uptight mouth and stammered, something of a key experience on the way to Damascus. He said, I saw a man who said to be the Buddha, his disciples listened intently, but understood nothing, because then never before they had heard the name Buddha, ignorant as they were. Jesus stood up, stretched himself and said, I am hungry, I have to eat something. They brought him a large plate full of porridge and a leg of a lamp. Jesus devoured everything and regained his strength. Then he got up from the table with a full stomach and announced, Maybe I am not the Son of God. All who heard him were besides himself and cried, How can you say such a thing? We follow you because we firmly believe that you are the Son of God. But Jesus went on saying strange things about killing his father in heaven. That threw the disciples in deep confusion. They brought a tattered Bible roll before Jesus to prove him from the holy books that he was the Son of God and also their Savior. Since Jesus rejected this, the disciples decided to kill him. But Jesus knew about it and fled.